Hello friends, this video on force and laws of motion part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Thereafter, based on these Galileo's ideas, Newton did little more research and he came up with the first law of motion. So what was Newton's first law of motion? It stated that a body at rest tends to remain at rest and a body in uniform motion tends to remain in the state of uniform motion until and unless an external force is applied on it. So the first law of motion spoke only about the scenario of uniform motion. So it said that, so even Galileo told something similar to this, right? So Galileo's law formed the basis of Newton's first law of motion. But what was special about, I mean, you might say then, then why Newton's first law is so famous, which it should have been called as Galileo's first law of motion. That's because Newton studied not only this portion of uniform motion, he also extended his studies and he also spoke about the scenario of non-uniform motion. So that is why he gave little more information about force and motion and that is why all the three laws came to be known as Newton's first law, second law and third law respectively. So Newton says that a body which is at rest, it always wants to be at rest only. Similarly, a body which is in uniform motion, it always wants to be in uniform motion until and unless some external force is applied on it. Let us suppose if you have a ball at rest, that is the ball is lying on the table. The ball will want to lie on the table for hours together, for days together, for years together if you don't apply an external force on it. So something which is at rest always will be at rest until and unless you apply some force on it. Similarly, something which is in uniform motion, that means it is moving with constant velocity. So this will also keep on moving with constant velocity. So when will it move with constant velocity? When it is on a, a hurdle free surface, a friction less surface, right? So it will keep on moving with the same constant velocity until and unless you apply some external force on it to stop it. So this was Newton's first law of motion. A body at rest wants to be at rest. Body in uniform motion wants to be in uniform motion until and unless an external force is applied on it. So let us look at the first law from the point of view of uh, balanced and unbalanced forces. How can we state the Newton's first law using the concept of balanced and unbalanced forces? A body at rest tends to remain at rest and a body in uniform motion tends to remain in the state of uniform motion until and unless an unbalanced force acts on it. That means that's what I told in earlier also, right? That if a body is at rest or if the body is at uniform motion, that means the net force on the body is equal to zero. That doesn't mean that there are no forces acting on the body. That means either there are no forces acting on the body or the body is under the influence of balanced forces, right? Because balanced forces does, does not cause any change in motion. Now, if we want, according to the first law, if the body at rest will remain at rest, the body in motion will remain in motion until and unless we apply an unbalanced force on it. What will happen if an unbalanced force is applied on the body? The moment an unbalanced force acts on the body, the body will be set in motion, right? Because unbalanced forces cause a change in the motion of the object, right? So for example, in the first case, this is a ball which is lying on the table and the ball doesn't move at all. The ball is at rest. Why is it at rest? Because it is under the influence of balanced forces. Now this ball, if you see, the ball is moving, right? Now the ball will keep on moving as long as the ball is moving with uniform velocity. It will keep on moving with uniform velocity as long as it is under the influence of balanced forces. As, as soon as you apply an unbalanced force on it, what will happen? The ball will stop, right? So the balanced forces do not cause any change in motion, whereas an unbalanced force causes a change in motion of the body. Okay, so with this, we completed Newton's first law of motion. 
Now, did you notice that here we spoke about uh, the tendency of the body to re which is at rest to remain at rest and the tendency of the body which is in uniform motion to remain at uniform motion, right? Now, this tendency of an object is known as inertia. So now we are introducing a new term. So in, I guess inertia is a new term to all of you. So inertia is nothing but a tendency of an object to remain its, in its present state. So inertia is the resistance of a body to change its state of motion. So when I say to change its state of motion, the state of motion means it can be at a uniform motion, it can be uh, at rest, Whatever the positive, whatever its state may be, it will always try to resist its present state. For example, a body which is at rest, it will always want to be at rest. So when you try to make it move, the body will offer some resistance. So that is known as inertia. So let us take this example. Let us suppose if you have a ball at rest. So this ball would want like to be at rest. Right? So even if you try to uh, apply some external force, initially the ball will resist that external force. But after that, when that force dominates, the ball starts moving. Similarly, a ball which is already moving, it will try, it will want that it keeps on moving. It will not want to come to rest. Right? So this property is known as inertia. So we will take some very uh, good examples from our day-to-day -day life, which all of us have would have experienced sometime or the other have you ever experienced jerk when brakes are applied suddenly let us suppose you are sitting inside a car suddenly the driver applies brakes what happens you feel a jerk why do you feel a jerk he applies a brake the car's velocity suddenly slows down the car suddenly slows down so earlier what was happening to the car so if you look at this car Suddenly when you apply brake, the person who is sitting inside, he feels a jerk. You uh, tend to bend when the brake is applied. That is because initially the car was moving, right? So the car was moving with a uniform velocity. So for the car, its current state of motion is this velocity V. So it, keep, it wants to move with this velocity. But when you suddenly apply brake, the car resists. The car doesn't want to change its initial position, I mean, it, its current position. So the person sitting inside also, this man, he wants to be in his current position. So what happens? The man is try, trying to be in his current position, but the car is moving forward. As a result, he experiences a jerk, right? So every object tries to retain its current position. Similarly, if you look at this example that there is a tendency to bend on one side on a bike during sharp turn. Let us suppose if you uh, go to some hilly areas or something, you would have seen that the roads have very sharp edges, right? The turns are extremely sharp. So when you take those turns, the person sitting on the bike or cycle, they tend to bend. Have you observed this? Look at this bending when they are taking this turn, right? So this bending also takes place because of inertia, because the body wants to move, be at the same position, but because of the turn, the vehicle moves along the direction of the turn and as a result, the body bends, right? So you got, there are many other examples. For example, when you, uh, you would have seen uh, a cup and a saucer. I mean, normally when uh, some guests come to our house, we serve them tea or coffee in a cup and saucer. So have you seen the uh, design of the saucer? It is little up outwards and it has a depth inside. Why is it so? So that the cup doesn't fall off. Because when if it is completely plain, if let us suppose if this is your cup and if this is your plate, and there is another scenario where this is your cup and this is your plate. So because of this sharp edges, it actually prevents the cup from falling down. Because this cup will have its inertia, it will always want to be in the same position. Now let us suppose if uh, uh, this plate is moved a bit, the cup might fall down, right? Similarly, uh, you would have seen this example that let us suppose if you have uh, a tumbler, on this you have played a 
thin card and above that you have placed a small coin. This is a very popular example of inertia. Now if you flick this card, what happens? The card is thrown off and what happens to the coin? The coin should also get thrown off along with the card but actually the coin falls into the tumbler. That's because the coin still wants to hold its current position. The coin doesn't want to leave its current position. So even though the paper is thrown away, the coin falls into the tumbler. Right, so these are some of the examples of inertia. So inertia has a very important role to play when we talk of force and motion. That because not only force, in fact, motion. Because the all these examples which I have demonstrated, they are all related to motion. During the movement of objects, we see that there there are at times where inertia plays an important role and because role and because of which we experience such. Uh, um, we get such experiences like uh, bending by, during sharp turns or jerks when a vehicle is slowed down suddenly. Okay. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.